Hi, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel and to my jelly journey, I guess is what I'm going to call it. I got a new jelly plate, as those of you who have been watching for a couple videos probably already know that. Uh, and I have learned a few things as I've gone along. So I thought I would kind of share with you some of the mistakes that I'm making, as well as some of the things that I've done right. I'd like to send a special thank you to Carrie Griffiths, who uh, also known as Carrie the Crafter, who pretty much got me off of the fence. I was not sure about this and then decided, yes, I wanted to do this challenge because it was small. It's four by six prints and on a five by seven plate, it's not intimidating. I think I can do that because it's so small. So um, I'm just looking here. I want to show you what I'm checking my notes. You know, I've always got notes. I'm going to show you a little bit about my journey and some things that I have learned uh, just starting out as a brand new jelly plate person. Um, please don't take anything as what I do as gospel because... Oh my glory, I am making so many mistakes. In fact, I'm not showing you some of my mistakes because they were really, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll do a bloopers reel in a little bit. Uh, in any case, let me flip my camera around and actually go into the craft room. I'm currently sitting in my study. I'm going to go into the craft room, show you my setup, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Here up in a moment. So on my desk... I, and you notice I have to clear it from everything else. I don't have a lot of space. This is not a lot of room that I have. So I have some stencils and things that I want to work on. I have here some lifting off sheets. I have here uh, these. I have both just regular coffee paper and some wet strength tissue that is I can use to make pull prints with. You notice I do not have a clear plate underneath my jelly plate, which is still in the clamshell. I have no, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'll talk about what, about this setup in a bit. Over here, I have two damp cloths. I have some things to make marks with. I have my stencils. I have a plate on which to mix this is just a ceramic tile from my bathroom that is currently under renovation. And so there was an extra tile. And then I have my brayer off sheets, my brayer, and all of my paints. And you'll notice that the paints are not, there's nothing fancy about them. I'll talk about those also as I go through. Okay, I'm going to change my view once more and go back, go to an overhead and I will be right back. Okay, so my camera is flipped and I have taken the gel plate out of the clamshell and I am taking off the, this is just plain computer paper and I put it on there to make sure that I don't get any bubbles into my gel plate because I don't want bubbles because bubbles will warp and, and this is gel, it conforms to the space it has. Um, so it is what it is. You'll notice it's not completely clear. That's because I've used it a couple times. When it, when you first get it out of the package, it's clear enough like a, like a piece of glass. You could see through it. Now it's more opaque because I've used a bunch of stuff on it. When you first open your gel plate, it has a layer of oil on it. I didn't know that, so I started right away. And I don't know if you can see on this sheet... There are some spots. That's because I just started right in. I just started using, I didn't prep it. I didn't season it. I didn't do anything to my gel plate. I just started right in using it because I didn't know any better. And I'm being told, I mean, we're watching videos now where you're supposed to season the plate. You're supposed to do this, that, and the other thing. And I didn't do any of that. So it is what it is. And so this is what I've got. You also notice I am on a craft mat. This is uh, an American Crafts, the Color of Memories. I think I got it at the Dollar Tree or maybe the Family Dollar. Anyway, um, it was not very expensive, and I decided to use it because I needed something flat that I could put this on. I have underneath, I have 
what is this? This, this is just cereal liner. It's the uh, wax paper to protect my table because this is my only table. This is all I have I, to work with. So I have to, you know, kind of protect what I have. I would like to get a plexiglass plate to put underneath here. I have seen a whole bunch of people, they are, they're able to pick it up and turn it over and then put it down on something. So if they want a second print on something, they can line it up and whatnot with the plexiglass. I can't do that with this mat. I would be working blind. So I would really like to get a piece of plexiglass for that. And Carrie the Crafter put feet on his, which makes so much sense because I see so many people trying to slide their plexiglass and trying to turn it over and whatnot, and it really is... The feet make sense. So I'm when next time I go to the hardware store, I'm buying a couple sheets of plexiglass because I have this gel plate and I have an 8x10. And I have not opened the 8x10. I haven't done anything with it. Right now it intimidates me. I'm sticking with my 5x7. And in fact, it was Carrie's... Thank you to Carrie the Crafter for putting out the Jelly Postcard Play Challenge for July because it's what got me off the fence. I have been looking at jelly plates since before last Christmas. And I just... I, I had a list of why I shouldn't you know, as long as my arm, I don't have the space, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, I don't have the dis. I mean, I had a list. Then I saw his challenge, and I thought, okay, just get off the fence. The pickets hurt. It's time to do to do something. So I have these. When we talk about paints, I have these paints from my husband, which are just regular acrylic paints. These were some that he got at one point, and um. They were, I don't know, part of a gift set, I think, and he was just trying to use them up. And he, when I started doing this, he said, here, you take them, because he's since graduated to certainly more sophisticated acrylics and into oils. He's a planar painter, and so he does a lot of work that way. Um, I He also had a whole bunch of craft paints. So I have a whole bunch of these craft paints, and I had already gone out and bought a few, so not knowing the difference between anything. There are four types of acrylic paints, if I'm understanding it correctly. There's liquid, there's open, there's heavy body, and there's regular. As far as I know, these are regular. Uh, most of what I have in these little bottles is just regular. Although I think when you're talking between like, the difference between heavy body and liquid, I think you're really mostly talking about viscosity. I may be wrong. And I know that open paints take longer to dry. There you go. That's the extent of my paint knowledge. I'm still learning. Obviously, I have a lot to learn. So let's go ahead and start with something. This is burnt sienna. And I'm going to start with something easy. I am just going to put a little bit of burnt sienna, and this is, the viscosity on this one is pretty thick. So I'm going to actually put probably too much on there. Everybody keeps saying, don't put too much on your plate. Well, guess what? I, I think I do. Um, yeah, because this is kind of clumpy. But we'll see. We'll work it and see what happens. It's also fairly old paint, and so I don't know that that might also have something to do with it. One of the things I've learned in the embraering is that lighter is better. Don't use a heavy touch, because when you use a heavy touch, you see how I'm getting lines? It's because I'm pushing too hard on my brayer. Okay, I have some brayering off sheets over here. I This is one of the things I always forget to do is to brayer off. So let's try that. All right. All right. Now I have, you can use really pretty much anything. And I have here, this is from a game. You know, you get the game and you got to poke out the pieces. I have probably six or seven of these in different shapes and sizes. And I pulled this one out to play with. Let's put that there. And then um, I'm going to take a piece of 
This is wet strength tissue. And I'm going to poke it down in the holes, wherever I can find the holes. And I'm not finding all of the holes, but that's probably okay. I'll pull that out. Now I've pulled some of that paint off of there. So when I take this off, this is what I have in its place. And I'm going to put that down on my brayering off sheet. I'll talk about those in a minute, just to get some of the paint off of here. Okay, now I have regular computer paper. This is not fancy. It's regular computer paper cut in half. I put it on top and then I press it down. And this is where a lot of people have a baron, which is a piece of wood that's heavy and it goes down and it makes a more even uh, pressing, I guess, is what I want to call it. I am just using my the palm of my hand, and specifically the heel of my hand. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now there's a lot of heavy paint, like in these areas here where there was a glob of paint. Uh, because, like I said, some of these paints are just really old. And we're just going to use them because I'm just going to use them. I'm not going to waste paint. Don't look a gift paint in the mouth. Is that what you... Okay, I don't know that too much of that came off. But that's okay. We're going to leave it. And I'm going to leave it a little bit messy. I'm learning. Leave. All right, sticking in the... Let's go with a, a different color entirely. So this is a yellow light. I'm not sure why it's a yellow light and not a light yellow. But this is a craft paint. And we're going to... Oh, we're going to leave that for right now. I don't... It, okay. Get rid of that on there. Rare gently, rare gently. I have to keep telling myself that because otherwise I get too heavy handed. I probably should also do this standing up. I'm sitting down to do this at this point because otherwise I can't, my camera gets in the way. So maybe I just have to suck it up and deal with it with the camera in my way. All right. Let me talk about the brayering off sheets for a minute. I have over here, these are some Avery labels and they were, I got them from for 50 cents for four sheets from, so 25 cents a sheet from the thrift store. So I'm just using those to brayer off with at this point. Okay, now you can see already that the red is coming up through that's okay with me. Um, I'm going to do something different this time. I've got three different size lids here. So I'm going, this is a pop bottle lid and I'm just gonna make in some odd spots, some circles. And I like to do um, odd number circles. This is off of one of my glue sticks. I'm just wiping it off on my brayer off sheet. And then this is off of one of those little tiny tubes of paint that I finished off. I need a few more of these. Maybe some going off the page. 
In fact, I like the, that idea of some going off the page. There. Okay. Ready for the pull? Now let's see what we get. One sheet, please. All right. So I'm learning it's not an exact science. Um, these are fairly simple things that I'm doing right now because I have tried to do some more complicated things. And in fact, you are not going to see those because I filmed them and you're not going to see them because they were awful. So I'm sticking with the simple for right now. Just sticking with the simple. Because the simple works. Now, what's cool about this is that there was some leftover of the dark in there. So I've got the dark circles and I have the light circles where I kind of removed some paint. So yeah, I'm very satisfied with this one. It ended up being that burnt sienna ended up becoming less red and more brown when put with the yellow. Okay, let's do one more. All right, ah, I'm having fun. This is just a lot of fun. Okay, so this is licorice, which I think is another word for black. And I have not played with it at all yet. So let's put that down. Yeah, that's definitely black. Um, and I want to get, do I want to mix it with anything or do I want to just do straight up black? I think we're just going to do straight up black. All right, let me move my, I just want to move these three things so I don't get them in my way when I'm doing the next piece. So we're going to set those aside. And where are my other mark makers? So I have over here a couple of things that I have done in the past. I've just got, this is just cardboard paper. And then this is one of those um, coffee holder things that I cut up and I've obviously tried using in the past. So we're going to use those for this black. And I don't want black on there, so I'm going to move that over. And I really don't want black on any of those. So let me grab another sheet to brayer off with. There we go. All right, here we go. Ooh, that's a nice deep color. I do like that. I haven't, like I said, I haven't played with black before. But I did just get a nice big glob of it down here. And I'm gonna wipe that up before I stick my elbow in it. Oh, that's a nice, shiny, shiny black. Okay. Bring it all off of my other sheets. Okay, what do we have here? So I have... What do I have? looking for something that's actually not going to be too complicated. I think we'll just go ahead and use this. This is a Dollar Tree uh, stencil. There is, I haven't used it before. I think it peels. Oh, it does. So I could peel it off and put it on something. I'm not going to peel it off. If I ruin it, it's a buck and a quarter. So let's put that right on there. Then I'm going to use one of these to take off any paint in between. Sorry, not talking. I'm concentrating on my zigzags here. So I don't, I know that a lot of people have like the PM Artist Studio stencils and 
Tim Holtz stencils and all of that. I'm afraid at this point, because I wasn't sure if I really wanted to spend the money doing things, I haven't spent a lot of money. Uh, and so this is, like I said, a Dollar Tree stencil. So it's not fancy by any means. Okay, that kind of came out cool. That'll be really cool to use like as borders and things. So I'm going to set that aside. I don't want to use that for anything else because that one's done. Okay, let's take off the stencil. And all of that came with it. So we're going to put that on the sheet over here on my labels. I will show you this. I know I'm completely off camera and I'm sorry for that. But let me just put that on there and then peel it off and not hardly any of that came off. So we're going to let that just sit and dry. And now I'm taking a sheet of computer paper. And we're doing this again. So if you are doing jelly plate printing and you're just starting out, you might be saying, well, how come you're not taking a class in this? I live in an area where there are no art classes for jelly printing. There is one that's being offered in Rochester, which is not that far away from me. My daughter lives in Rochester. It's, you know, less than a 40 minute drive. It's not a big deal. Uh, but it's one class. It's being offered in August. I don't want to wait that long. And there's one slot left open. So there's very little space. And I have a couple people I'd like to take it, the class with. So yeah, we're going to end up learning on our own. Okay. This didn't come out quite as well as I'd hoped. I like the other print better. That's down on the floor. So I'm going to leave that one as it is. Um, okay. Let me try this. Okay. I've seen people do this. I don't know if this is going to work. Lightly, lightly, go lightly, Holly, go lightly, lighter. Okay. Um, I'm kind of liking how it's coming out on this stuff, so I'm going to try it on here again. This is the wet strength tissue. And I'm hoping to clean up and pick up that pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I sort of did. I'm kind of liking how this white strength tissue stuff's coming out. That looks cool. Okay, I didn't get what I wanted on the computer paper, but I am getting something much cooler on the on the white strength tissue. Ah, this is so much fun. I am just having a good time. Okay, I wanted to use these, and then I used the other stamp instead. So let's try this one more time. Um, I think not with the black. This time I'm going to have a paper here and let's go with red. I've got a whole bunch of colors on here at this point. This is lipstick red. There you go. How's that for bright red? Theoretically. Oh yeah, this is really bright. Oh, this is going to hurt your eyes bright. Especially after that black. Nice and bright. This 
rear off sheet's going to have some bright colors on it. Okay, I think I'm going to try it with this. And then just lift off. Paint down. I know I could do this on the brayer off sheets, but I just, I'm curious as to how it's going to work. Okay, and then I'm just tapping it lightly. And then I'm just going to make an impression there and make an impression here and make an impression there and one down here I think I have these you know what I'm going to cut that real quick because I want to be able to get in there and see See what I'm doing. Oops, now I kind of smudged. All right, and I got fingerprints over here, and oh my glory. All right, I'm gonna still try with the computer paper. What the heck? All right. So you find things around the house, and I do find myself looking at things differently. I look at things and I say, oh, that would make this kind of a mark, and oh, that would make this kind of a mark, and so, like I said, you know, I have the three tops. I know it's supposed to be the four tops, right? Dating myself. Okay, it's interesting. Some of the pattern seems to be coming up through the paper. Is that supposed to happen, guys? Those of you who do this, let me know, because I can see some of my pattern in there. There we go. So I still have some of the chevrons and some of the black that was on there. And then I have my red with my... Okay. This is cool. This is most definitely cool. All right, I have a paper here that this is just a cleanup sheet. I don't know if it'll take anything else off of there, but I just want to clean up my jelly plate because I think I am done for the moment. And it took some of it off, but it still left some on there. Let's try it again. And I know, I don't know if I should be anal about it or not, but I am at the moment about getting my jelly plate perfectly clean. So I'm going to, where'd I put it? I know I have it here somewhere. I used it just a few minutes ago. There it is. Sorry for the noise. This is packing tape. And packing tape will clean your jelly plate completely. When I heard that hack, I thought, are you kidding me? That's so easy. And it doesn't really work, does it? Oh, wait till you see. So you just put it on there and lift it off. And look at all the paint that comes right off of there. Cleans your jelly plate amazingly. So this, and I know I don't have to do this every time. That's what I keep being told. It's okay to let it build up along the side. I'm not there yet. I don't like it building up along the side because I just, at this point, I, maybe part of it is that I don't use my jelly plate every single day. And because I'm not using it all the time, I worry that, um, any paint I leave on it will make divots. And so I'm very careful to get 
all the paint off. Remember when you were a kid and your mom would take the scotch tape to your clothes? Jeez, oh, now I'm stuck to my plate. Um, wish I would take it off the plate that easily. Okay. I'm holding this up so that I can see where I still have. Again, that's where having this on something else other than green would be helpful because then you could see where you have not gotten everything off. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm sticking to myself now. If you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you are doing jelly plate printing, please put a link to your place. If you can't put it into the uh, comments down below, go over to my YouTube page. Or sorry, this is my YouTube page. Go over to my Facebook page and put a link over there and let me know what you're doing because it would be very cool to see what your see your jelly journey and that's what I'm doing I, this is my jelly journey okay to put this away I'm just going to show you to you real quick to put this away I put my sheets of this is again this is just plain computer paper over the top and I want to make sure that I don't have any um, air holes underneath it because that's what I want to make sure. Where did my other sheet go? There it is. Fell down behind my paint. There we go. So I'm just double checking, making sure there's no air holes. Aha, uh -huh. and there are. So. It might be time for some new sheets. Let's just do it this way. Because the ones I have I've been using for uh, a while. And they get a little wrinkly. And when they get, see how wrinkly that is? When it gets wrinkly like that, it doesn't make a, a nice impression anymore. I mean, it makes an impression, which I don't want it to do. I don't want an impression. That's the whole point. All right, I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to cut off my tops. I'm going to stick it back in my clamshell. If you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit like. Hit the bell for notifications so you know when the next one comes out. And feel free to share these videos. If you're having a good time, share them with your friends. Share them with, with people. Share them with a group. Uh, and in the meantime, this is Cindy playing around and having fun and signing off.